This studio is actually really, really nice. Blanco, we're here at Blanco. Sarah Dici rhymes with peachy, and this is Justin Romine, rhymes with coal mine. This video has been a long time coming, but I'm finally making it. This is my review of the Red Komodo 6K. So the reason I had actually got the Komodo originally was to be my B cam for my Red Epic Dragon. Backing up a bit from there, I wanted slash felt I was ready to invest back into my company during the second quarter of 2020. So I did a massive switch from using the Canon 1DX Mark II as my A cam to the Red Epic Dragon. Long story short, having the Komodo as my B cam didn't last super long. I felt myself constantly wanting to use it as my A cam on shoots because it was just lighter, easier, convenienter. I won't spill all the beans just yet, but I am happy to say the Red Komodo is now my A cam on every level of production that we do here at Red Creative Films. I will tell y'all everything about my experience so far, not just the good, but the bad as well. Disclaimer here though, I did buy the Stormtrooper model of the Red Komodo. They were basically the first production models made of the Komodo with white coating similar to that of the Stormtrooper from Star Wars. Because these were the first test models and the firmware was in beta, Red did say to let them know ASAP about any issues. Well, about a month into owning the Komodo, I was filming with it on a job. Don't worry, I did have a backup cam. And as I'm interviewing this guy, the colors on my monitor go like this tie-dye inverted mode. Very weird to describe, I don't know. It almost looked like I had turned on false color, but I didn't, I didn't even touch it. So I saved a log file to the camera, sent it to Red, and after they reviewed the file, I would need to send it in for further evaluation, which I was kind of upset about. But they would get me a replacement of the camera for free within two days of receiving my camera, which was super awesome. Yes, it was a bummer and kind of freaky this happened to me only one month in, but props to Red for getting me my replacement super fast. Very minimal downtime on my end. Only other big issues I had with the Komodo has been the fault of, well, me. The camera would glitch out or do something weird. I'd send a log file to Red and they say the issues would be resolved if I would just update the firmware to the latest version. So I was like, all right, I'll download it and it fixed it. Outside of those minor issues, I have to say the Komodo has been an absolute game changer for our productions. The versatility is the biggest selling point for me because this is Red's lightest cinema camera. I can go handheld with it all day if I wanted, or I can throw it on my RS2 or fly cam and use it like that all day. Unlike Red's bigger cinema cameras, the Komodo can not only go on a tripod, but I've even used it on a Joby Gorillapod to get into super tight spaces where the tripod just isn't feasible. There are tons of great features about this camera besides just the versatility on shoots. This won't be a full comprehensive list of all the features offered in this camera, just my favorites after about 11 months of using it pretty much every day. First off, the global shutter. The fact that this camera has this is more amazing than I could have imagined. I mean, you hear and see about global shutter online and how good it is, but let me tell you why I love it. Global shutter helps keep lines straight as you move or whip the camera. The best part about this though, is that in post, when you go to stabilize a shot that you did handheld or whatever, it works like absolute magic. I've had handheld shots without a tripod that I stabilize in post using the camera lock in DaVinci Resolve that literally look like I had the camera on a tripod. It's simply amazing. Next up is the image quality. 6K, red IPP2 colors, 16 stops, 16 plus stops of dynamic range. And I'm wrapping all these features together because they all go into the image quality of the Komodo. First off, you get the 6K resolution, which means you'll have tons of room to zoom in, reframe shots in post, but the Komodo also shoots in ProRes 4K 10-bit, which I actually use most often, but you still get the full readout of the 6K sensor on the camera. I did a comparison once and it was the same field of view and I could honestly not visually see a difference between the R3D and the ProRes images. Obviously, I know that you get way more flexibility and color depth in the R3D, but I only shoot in RAW when I know that I'll absolutely need it. 
And I have to say, Red's color science with the IPP2 is freaking gold. How it handles skin tones and the colors you get out of this camera are exactly what you would expect to see at a cinema Hollywood level. All for only $6,000? This seems too good to be true, but it's not. It's no wonder it's so hard to get your hands on a Komodo. Personally, I'd recommend getting on the waiting list now or joining the Red Komodo Facebook group and seeing if anyone has an extra one they are trying to sell. I bought mine from someone in the group, brand new, unopened, in box, for the same price he paid Red. Well, filmmakers, this has been my experience of owning the Red Komodo for 11 months. I hope this helped you decide which direction you'd like to go. Now for the big question, to Komodo or not to Komodo? This is a pretty cool looking space. This is awesome. It's like uh, white or like Blanco or something. Okay, all right, no. What? We're, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> Wait, how do, you, how do you say white in Spanish again? Is it Blanco? It's